will be the 100th successful firing of the Thor missile, and it will carry into orbit a satellite even more remarkable than the recent Echo. Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be getting into actually SOLIDWORKS, and we're going to be starting off our new series, which is uh, Cadding History. Basically, we're going to be revisiting interesting engineering events in history and making 3D models out of the important things that were created or that happened on that day in history. So this video is going to be released on February the 4th of 2021 and we're going to be revisiting a pretty important um, series of events that um, one of which happened on February 4th 1961. On February 4th 1961 the Sputnik 7 spacecraft was launched into space by the Soviets. Um, Sputnik 7 was in this was in a long series of spacecraft developed by the Soviets um, during the US and Soviet Union space war. Um, and unfortunately Sputnik 7 never made it past low Earth orbit. Um, however, its originator, its ancestor Sputnik 1, uh, which we now see a, f a lot um, in history books and it's quite an iconic shape. It's basically a sphere with four antennas sticking out of it, four very long antennas. So today um, we're going to be actually catting Sputnik 1. So yeah, let's get right into it. So on your screen right now, um, you will see a model of or a replica of Sputnik 1 and you can as you can see the um, it's a very shiny metal sphere basically uh, with four long antennas protruding out of its sides um, so we're going to be doing a rough 3d model of it in SOLIDWORKS we're going to be getting into quite a different quite a lot of different features in SOLIDWORKS here is the Wikipedia article from which that uh, image was derived and was taken from and this Wikipedia article does a pretty good job of explaining some of the main dimensions of this spacecraft. Um, so as you can see we're about to highlight the dimensions that are listed in the article. The satellite was a 585 millimeter diameter sphere assembled from two hemispheres that were hermetically sealed with o-rings and connected by 36 bolts. Um, the hemispheres were two millimeters thick and were covered with a highly polished one millimeter thick heat shield made of an aluminum magnesium titanium alloy AMG 6T. The satellite carried two pairs of antennas which in four is four in total designed by the antenna laboratory of OKB1. Each antenna was made up of two whip like parts 2.4 and 2.9 meters or 7.9 and 9.5 feet in length and had an almost sphere spherical radiation pattern. Right, so we're just going to go ahead and start up SOLIDWORKS. Um, I'm using the 2020 version. So here is the main startup screen of SOLIDWORKS. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and create a new part. Wait for a while while it creates a new part. Uh, you will notice that in the bottom right hand corner it says MMGS, which means that uh, the unit system is in millimeters, grams, and seconds. So this is a unit system. Um, there's also IPS, which stands for inch, pound, seconds. Um, but since the measurements, especially for the antenna and for the diameter of the sphere, the main sphere in Sputnik 1 was given in meters uh, and in millimeters, so it makes sense to use uh, this unit system. So here I'm referencing back to the Wikipedia article, 585 millimeter diameter sphere, and the hemispheres were two millimeters thick. So we're first going to go ahead and model this in SOLIDWORKS. So I, here I chose front plane um, for our sketch plane. You could choose any plane actually um, to do this, but I kind of wanted the model to uh, appear vertical. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the main reason that I wanted to choose the front plane. So an overview while I'm just drawing out some construction lines um, is that this uh, we're going to be doing a revolve feature um, so the center line that I just drew right here is going to be kind of the revolving axis 
Um, so here we see that I just drew a circle and I'm going to change the diameter to uh, 585 millimeters. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that right in. So now we have a circle with a diameter of 585 millimeters, um, but the Wikipedia article said that had it, it was two millimeters thick. So how do we do this? Well, we can use the offset entity sketch tool, um, which will offset the entire circle um, inward in this case. You can choose which direction you want it to go, but in this case we want it to go inward. So inward two millimeters. Um, so now the distance, the radial distance between the outer and the inner circles is two millimeters. And so here we tried to create a revolve feature, but as you may notice, um, we are not able to create one and a preview does not show. Um, this is because the sketch is actually open, meaning it has no uh, closed area. And in SolidWorks, it doesn't like for you to not have uh, open areas because you can't really revolve something that has no area. Um, so here we zoom in and then we see that, oh, it's not grayed out. Um, so in SolidWorks, when you have a enclosed area, uh, so fully enclosed area, it'll actually show a gray. So here I zoom in and you see it's gray, meaning that it's uh, it's a closed sketch. So now we go back to our evolved boss space and you can see that um, with the default uh, parameters, um, which is the axis of revolution, is the center line, the construction center line that we defined prior. Um, and then in the direction one, in this case, there's not really a defined direction, but it just kind of determines an arbitrary direction. And we're going to be rotating 360 degrees, um, which creates this big sphere. Um, and the sphere is hollow in the middle, of course, because our clothes section is not a full half circle, um, but it's actually two circles nested in each other, and then we're just revolving that area around this axis. So we're going to go ahead and click check, and here we have our very first solid body. Um, so you see in the left-hand side, in the design tree, I've also heard it being called the model tree, um, you see that it's nabled, uh, uh, labeled Revolve 1. And so SolidWorks just kind of names it. Uh, Revolve features are called Revolve and then and the next lowest number that you haven't used yet. So in this case, Revolve 1, there's also uh, Extruded Boss um, and so on and so forth. So here we note, um, according to the Wikipedia article, that uh, in addition to this two millimeter thick um, sphere essentially hollow sphere um, there's also a one millimeter thick heat shield on the outside which is uh, of the material amg6t so we're going to go ahead and model that right now so i'm just going to go ahead and select the front plane again for a sketch plane and solidworks has a feature where you can easily um, view your sketch normal uh, view have a normal view to that sketch sketch plane. In order to do that, you just right click on the sketch, um, and then you select that little icon, um, and they'll go ahead and orient it normal uh, to the sketch plane. If you don't like it, um, meaning that uh, you're viewing it on the wrong side and you want to flip it 180 degrees around, you can just repeat that same uh, process. So right click and then select that icon again, and it'll flip it 180 degrees for you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to apply a another offset entities and it's, this is going to be in one millimeter out. So this is going to be the outer, basically outer shell of the heat shield. But now we have only the outer uh, part of the heat shield, right? So we need the inner part of the heat shield, the one that is touching uh, the actual um, the actual sphere that we have created previously with the revolve feature. Um, so in order to do that, we click convert entities, and what this basically does is that it projects um, whatever you're selecting onto the current sketch plane. So in this case, I was uh, selecting the outer edge, the outer hypothetical edge um, of the sphere, 
and then it just projected it onto the sketch plane. So now what we technically have is two concentric concentric circles, um, which means sharing the same center, uh, and their radii are one millimeter apart. So here, because um, there's no actually enclosed, or they, sorry, there is an enclosed area, um, but it's not the enclosed area we want because we want something that can be made into a revolve feature. So we have to uh, split it into um, two parts. Um, so here I'm just creating the vertical line. And we're going to go ahead and use the trim tool. So the trim tool is pretty powerful. Um, basically anything that is intersecting the trim tool where you uh, drag it to will be deleted. And um, anything be between two endpoints. So in this case, um, I dragged my trim tool over the two, uh, two halves of the circle um, on the left side. And since there is quote quote an end point um, that is made by the line, I just drew the vertical line. So therefore only the left half of the circle is deleted. If I did not have that vertical line and I applied the trim tool, um, then the entire circle would be deleted. Um, so that's of course not what we want. I'm just going to apply the trim tool again to the center line. Um, so in this case, that basically removes everything in the middle between uh, the opposite, the opposite uh, kind of endpoints of the semicircle, the inner semicircle. So now, if we zoom in, we'll see that it's a, uh, a fully closed sketch, and it's the sketch that we want. Um, again, this is defining a one millimeter thick heat shield that completely enwraps, uh, goes around the 585 millimeter uh, diameter sphere or hollow sphere um, and so we're going to go ahead and create that revolve boss base and in this case it's interesting to note that we don't actually have the vertical construction center line that we had before for the revolve feature for the big revolve feature um, so in this case we can actually click on that little small um, vertical line and that can be our axis of revolution. So now we zoom out we can see that uh, we have our basically full body. So it's in SolidWorks it's a good thing especially if you're going to be sharing your files or displaying it to other people in this case to rename your files. Uh, sorry rename your features. Um, so in this case we have Revolve 1 which is a default name. Uh, of course we want to name it to something a little bit more descriptive so we're just going to go ahead and name it to body and we're going to name the outside to heat shield. So back in the Wikipedia article we remember that uh, the material um, of the heat shield was AM6, AMG 6T. Of course SOLIDWORKS basically has a very limited set of materials possible so here we're just going to choose a titanium uh, aluminum alloy I believe which is contains two out of the, I think, four elements that were present in the actual alloy used in the heat shield. So we're just going to apply that to the, uh, the entire part. And it's important to note that uh, the Wikipedia article didn't specify what the inner sphere was made out of, the main sphere. It only specified the material of the heat shield. Um, but since we made both the heat shield and the inner sphere as the same part, so um, we kind of just made the whole thing the titanium alloy. So at this point, uh, saving your files, always very important. I should have actually done this earlier. Um, we're just going to be saving it in a directory and we're going to name it um, Sputnik. Okay, so now we have our heat shield and our inner body as stated before. So now what we want to do is actually go ahead and create the, um, the mounts for the antenna. So there's four antenna, meaning there has to be four mounts. So we're just going to go ahead and create a sketch on the front plane for these mounts. Um, it's important to note that we don't actually have a dimensions exactly on how big these mounts were, so I'm just going to eyeball it. So the first thing we do is to convert the outer edge again um, using the convert entities tool, which again uh, projects the wh whichever edge you're selecting onto the current sketch plane. 
and looking back at our original photo we can see that the mounting points um, approximately have the shape uh, if viewed from the side um, of a sort of figure with uh, three line segments connected to the sphere so we're just going to go ahead and model that right now So here we model out the first, we draw out the first uh, line segment. Um, there's the second and there's the third. Again, we're not going for a really precision here. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it. And I just uh, indicated right over there um, that that is a tangent relation. Um, so the tangent relation kind of looks like a little circle with a line, uh, well, kind of tangent to the circle basically what it does is that if you have a line and actually could be curve um, and then you make that tangent to another circle or another circular feature in this case it is a circle um, then what it'll do is that it'll make it so that um, it has a very smooth transition. So in this case, you may see that um, you can literally trace out that first line that I drew, um, and then you can just trace it until you meet the circle, and then once it touches the circle, you just continue going. There's no like rough transition. So the first dimension that I put down is actually to a center line. Um, in this case, it's a line drawn straight through the origin and it's horizontal. Um, and I wanted the bottom to be 10 degrees out because uh, you may remember um, from the Sputnik model that was in the Wikipedia article that um, the antennas flared out, right? They went out um, some degrees. So here I'm just adding a few more dimensions. I just kind of eyeballed it. The top is going to be 150. Um, and then the bottom, I just put in an arbitrary value. So here uh, we have finished fully defining our part. Um, so it's 10 degrees, uh, the bottom is 10 degrees from the bottom, uh, sorry, from the center line, and uh, it's 50 millimeters on that uh, second segment that I drew, and then 150 millimeters on the very first segment that I drew. Um, so you may see that, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you may see that, um, first of all, there is the gray filling, meaning that the sketch is um, fully enclosed. Also, uh, in the bottom right hand side, you'll notice that there's the words fully defined. Um, fully defined means uh, fully defined, meaning that the sketch cannot be moved or altered from its current position and it cannot change its shape. So basically it's fixed uh, in the sketch plane. So that's what we want because uh, we don't want, if you're mo uh, modifying other dimensions later, later on and then you have a sketch that's undefined, um, then that means it could just move around. Right, so we don't want that because that could change uh, basically how the entire part looks. So here we're just creating our revolve feature. Um, so this is again for the mounts and we select our axis of revolution, which is going to be that center center line, vertical center line. And uh, you may notice that actually um, the preview goes all the way around the sphere. Um, this is because, as you can see in the parameter, it says 360 degrees. We don't want that, um, so we're just going to enter in 20. Uh, we're just going to enter in 10 degrees. And you may also notice that before I just put a parameter for mid plane instead of blind. So what mid plane does is that it extrudes on both sides of your sketch plane. So in this case, our sketch plane is uh, sort of we're looking flat onto our sketch plane. So if our sketch plane was a piece of paper, we're looking straight down on top of it. And what mid plane does is that it'll extrude uh, halfway the distance up, uh, up from the quote unquote piece of paper or sketch plane and half the distance down as well. Now in this case, it's not distance, it's angles, but it's kind of the same concept. Um, so you may see from this 
kind of rotated side angle um, side viewing angle that there is half of the mount on behind the sketch plane and there's half in the front so that's basically what mid plane does so now rotating back to an isometric view, which is a standard view, um, we can see that the mount has been successfully created um, and it kind of looks like that from the image, uh, but it's missing some details, um, which we will soon address. But first, before we do that, of course, there is uh, there isn't just one mount, there's four mounts. Um, so we utilize a SOLIDWORKS tool called circular pattern and this what basically does is if you specify a central axis you specify a direction um, so here is our direction one so we're just going to specify a circular edge which in this case um, i'm just going to specify is the bottom um, one of the bottom edges of that mount it could be any uh, circular edge and now we have features and faces. Um, so of course we want to revolve that mount around and we want four of them uh, equally spaced out across the entire Sputnik main body. So we're going to change that from two to four and then press okay. And now we have all of our four mounts successfully created. So now we're just going to do some quick renaming. Uh, we're going to rename the mount uh, Right, we're going to name it to antenna mount. And now for just for sake of illustration, you may see that I just moved the rollback bar um, up one. So what the rollback bar does is basically it indicates at which position in your model's history you are. So normally, uh, if you don't do anything, uh, the rollback bar is always going to be on the very bottom of all the features in your design tree. Um, in this case, uh, I moved it up one, so right above the circular pattern. And this is kind of just for illustration. I could have done it. I could have. I could have also not done it. Um, but this is to create a chamfer. So what a chamfer is is. Um, it's basically you're cutting, you're shaving off an edge, basically. So the difference between a fillet, um, I'm pretty sure we're familiar with uh, fillets. Um, fillets are quite important in aerodynamics um, for maintaining good, uh, good airflow. Um, but what a chamfer does is it's basically a fillet except that it has edges. It's a fillet with edges, basically. So while a fillet is rounding off an edge, a chamfer is literally cutting off the edge. So if you apply a chamfer on the edge, you'll actually create two more. You'll actually create two edges. Um, so in the end, you'll actually end up with one more edge than when you started. Um, but in this case, we're just doing a chamfer to kind of replicate um, the look of the Sputnik replica that we just saw from the Wikipedia article. So I guess that, I don't know, that kind of looks like uh, what it looked like in the Wikipedia article. And you may see I just moved the rollback bar back down and that basically uh, basically recreated that feature. Um, but as you can see, um, the features do not contain the chamfer because again, the chamfer was only applied on the original feature, right? It wasn't applied to the rest of the, the, the circular pattern features. So in order to uh, remedy, remedy this, we're just going to change the parameters of the circle pattern feature to include not only that initial antenna mount that I made, but also the chamfer that goes along with all four of the mounts. So if you press OK, then we'll see that, oh yeah, actually all four of the mounts now have the required chamfer that we want. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and create our 
hole. Um, so this is the hole that the antenna is going to be mounted into. And um, yeah, so in order to create this hole actually, because the bottom edge of the mount that we're seeing right now is not actually flat. Um, so SolidWorks does not recognize um, non-flat surfaces or curved surfaces as being able to draw sketches on. Um, so we're not actually able to create a simple 2D sketch. We'll have to go off of a 3D sketch. That's kind of out of the scope of this video. So instead, how we're going to work around this is we're actually going to create a plane um, that is coincident to these three of the points that I'm specifying in the parameters here. And since a plane requires only three points um, to be defined, it could also be defined with two points, uh, sorry, one point and a line. And we're going to do is we're going to draw a sketch on this plane. And the sketch is going to be uh, actually going to be made into the hole um, that we will be mounting our antenna part into. So you see I just selected a simple circle, a simple center circle, and we're just going to go ahead and do a dimension to it. And you can see the dimension comes off and we're just going to arbitrarily choose a number. We're just going to say 14 millimeters in diameter. And you'll see that it's still undefined because the center can still be moved around. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and make it centered to the outer edge of the, the mount. And you can see that I'm just going to the center point of that arc. And we're going to go ahead and make it vertical. So now it's constrained in the kind of the horizontal aspect. So you're not able to move the circle side to side now, but it can still move up and down. So that calls for making uh, the center of the circle horizontal with the center of the line segment to the left, which I just did. And now we're ready for our extruded cut. So uh, the default parameters for an extruded cut is blind. Um, so I'm just kind of looking at it the side and you can see that it's in the wrong direction. Um, so in order to flip it, you just click on that little uh, two arrows, one black, one white, and it'll just flip the direction of the cut for you. But something very interesting to note is that actually the plane is embedded inside of the mount. Um, so the hole that it is creating is not actually going through the top or sorry the bottom face of the mount So obviously you cannot insert an antenna in it. So what we're going to do. We're actually going to Add a second direction um, So yeah, SOLIDWORKS you can select uh, I think two directions for your extrude and the second direction is going to be through all So our first direction is 40 millimeters as was seen before uh, but our second direction is going to be through all and our second direction is actually coming toward us in this case and through all basically means that it's going to go through anything in its way in the model um, so that's why you see that it's really long because it's literally going through everything that's in the model so now you can see that the hole is successfully created we now have a hole in diameter 14 and a depth of uh, i believe 40. Um, and just for cosmetic purposes, we're just going to go ahead and hide that plane that we just used to uh, sketch that circle on that was used to create the hole. We're going to go ahead and rename that hole to mounting hole because, I mean, it's kind of a sub-descriptive name. And here we apply a second, or we create a second circular pattern feature now with the mounting hole. Um, I could have also uh, done better design intent. Uh, pay better attention to design intent and created the hole first so that it could be incorporated into the first uh, circular pattern feature um, but yeah I was kind of forced in this case to make it into a second circular pattern feature it's the same result but it's just another feature created so yeah now we have our completed Sputnik part um, so to reiterate again, that's a sphere of diameter 585 millimeters with a one millimeter thick heat shield on the outside. The part material is a titanium alloy. We went ahead and created the four mounts. Um, then we applied a circular pattern on them to rotate them uh, around 360 degrees of the sphere. Um, and there's four of them, so it's equally spaced. And then we applied chamfers to the two top edges of the mounts just to make it look more like the original Sputnik mount. After that, 
Then we created the mounting holes on the bottom with a diameter of 14 and a depth of, I believe, 40 millimeters. Um, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and actually transition to creating our second part, which is the antenna itself. So in order to create a new part, if you're not at the starting screen, you just go up to the top toolbar, um, you select File, New, and then we're going to go ahead and click Part because we want to create a plot part. And so basically the antenna, um, if you remember previously from the uh, replica that was shown in the Wikipedia article, um, it's a basically a rod. Um, it's a very long rod. Um, it's 2.4 meters long. I think we're going to actually be using a different um, length here, but it's approximately 2.4 meters long and it has pretty simple cross section. In this case, we're just going to be approximating it with a circle. And as before, with since before with the um, with the Sputnik main part, um, it had a diameter of 14 millimeters for the mounting holes. So we're going to make the antenna diameter 14 millimeters as well. So we just dimension the center straight to the origin and we make the diameter of the circle um, on the sketch to be 14 millimeters. And yes, we used uh, 2.9 meters in this case, which was the longer of the two dimensions provided by the Wikipedia article. Um, 2.9 meters is also equivalent to 2,900 millimeters, which we just put into the parameters for the boss extrude. So we're just going to go ahead and rename that boss extrude to a very simple name. It's just going to be antenna. And we're going to go ahead and save the part uh, to also antenna. So now we have our two parts ready, and now we're ready to actually begin assembling the two parts. Um, actually, sorry, before that, we're going to uh, put the define the material. Um, so since the material for the antenna wasn't specified, we're just going to assume it's some sort of steel. Um, in this case, I just chose chrome stainless steel, partly so that it would look nice because chrome has a very uh, shiny appearance. So now, yes, we can say that our antenna part is now done, and we're just going to go ahead and create an assembly. So assemblies are a bit different from parts. Uh, with the part, when you first open it up, you'll see your design tree on the left, and you'll see basically a blank uh, UI on, or a, a blank workspace on the right, or with planes, uh, if you have planes enabled. But when you open an assembly, the default settings is that on the left, you'll now see uh, the option to add in parts that you have currently open or to browse for parts that uh, that you have created and th that you have. So of course we want Sputnik to be our first part in because that's the base. Um, and you may notice that on the left in the design tree you have um, F in parentheses and double parentheses uh, before the name of the part which is in this case Sputnik uh, with side carrots 1. And that, what that F means is that the part is currently fixed, meaning that it's kind of a catch-all restraint, um, restricting the part in all um, three dimensions of translational freedom and all three dimensions of rotational freedom. So basically it's just fixed in space, it can't move, it can't shake, uh, change its side, it can't be rotated. Um, so this is kind of bad practice because uh, you're just basically putting it in an arbitrary location in space. Um, so what we want to do instead is we want it to be constrained to a, a place that we actually know where it is. So we just right click on it and click float. Um, so what float does is it removes that fixed restraint and now we can apply mates to it. So the concept of a mate and assembly, uh, so there's many different types of mates. Um, I believe in this assembly we're going to be focusing on a very limited um, set of mates, namely coincident and concentric. So we're just going to apply coincident mates between the front plane of the assembly, um, the front plane of the part, uh, in this case which is Sputnik, and you can see that a nice little handy toolbar, mini toolbar pops up um, with kind of icons of it and then a little check mark. This is just to avoid you um, moving your mouse all the way to the top, um, to the very top of the mate menu. So we do the same with the front 
and sorry with the top and the right planes um, so now when we exit back or we want to check back to the uh, to the design tree you can see now that there is no marking before the part name in the design tree this means that the part is fully defined um, you can also see that verified in the bottom right hand corner it says fully defined sorry assembly is fully defined meaning that all parts within the assembly cannot be moved around so now that we have uh, our main body fully in, now we can go ahead and insert in the antennas. Um, so the antennas are huge, um, which is fine. And then we're just going to go ahead and apply mates. Um, so I believe the first mate that I'm going to apply is a concentric mate. So what a concentric mate requires, um, per its name, uh, it requires two circular kind of things to put it concentric to one another. So again, concentric means um, that you share the same center and it's applied to circular objects. So in this case, I'm selecting the circular outer face of the cylinder, which in this case is the antenna. And then I'm going to go ahead and select um, the inner cylinder of a mounting hole. There's also an option that I just hovered over there that says lock rotation. Um, so this is for um, Basically, any concentric mate you can choose uh, to prevent it from rotating inside of the concentric mate. Um, if you don't do this, it'll actually show up as undefined in SolidWorks, but it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't really matter um, unless you're dealing with something that depends on its rotation. So now you can see that uh, while well, it's aligned in the mount slot, but uh, as you can clearly see, it's not. Um, it's on the proper position, right? It should be fully in the mount slot and it shouldn't be sticking through the mount slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom into the top, um, circle down, and we're just going to select the top face. And that top face is now going to be concentric with the inner, uh, with the uh, kind of top inner face inside of the mounting hole. And SolidWorks is automatically going to choose a coincident rest uh, constraint for me, which is what I want. And yeah, now for our purposes, that one antenna is fully defined. Um, according to SolidWorks, and you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's still underdefined. That's because we didn't lock the rotation of that antenna. If we did lock the rotation of that antenna, um, then it would read as fully defined. So now we have one antenna, uh, but of course we need four antennas, right? So what we can do actually is select uh, insert components in that little drop down, and it's copy with mates. So what copy with mates does is you can select a part that's already in your assembly, and you can choose to copy over its mates to a separate location. So in this case, uh, you can see that automatically populated the concentric and the coincident mates. So now we're just going to apply it to, yeah, straight to the other mounting holes, and we're going to do that for all three remaining ones. So now we have Sputnik fully modeled and you can see all four antennas and all four mounting holes and yeah, it looks pretty cool. So our final step is actually to do a SolidWorks render. Um, I'm not going to show exactly how I got this render here because it's kind of involved. Um, but you may see that the background of the uh, of the, the the workspace quote quote has changed to a kind of black this you can specify according to the settings and what SOLIDWORKS has actually a built-in plugin that can render your model uh, how it's supposed to look in the real world so you can specify a camera setting you can specify a background you can specify reflections you can specify all that and it takes your materials that you specified for your models and it determines their appearance um, so you can see the final rendered output here this is maybe what Sputnik look in real life it probably looked a little bit different um, but yeah it looks pretty cool 
Well, thanks for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed this very first episode in our installment of uh, Catting History. Um, so today we covered Sputnik 1. Yeah, so hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below if you want, and we'll see you next time.